Welcome to part seven and the last part of this tutorial series on how to create this stylized penguin character. So this is the last part, part seven. And in this part, we are going to be animating the penguin. We're going to render out all the frames and then compile them in Blender's video editor. And then we'll also be adding some sound effects and rendering the final animation. So in the last part, we had done the compositing to make the final render look nice. Let's click back on the layout here. And if you need to, you can press escape to go back into the 3D view. I'm going to hold down the Z button, go back into solid view, and then let go. And then also I'm going to press Alt-H, and Alt-H is going to un unhide those bones that we hid in the previous part. So I now want to bring the penguin back to his default pose. So I'm going to select the bones and I'm going to press control tab and control tab is going to go into pose mode. I'm going to double tap the A key to make sure everything's selected. And I'm going to press alt R that will clear the rotation, alt G that will clear any movement and alt S and that's going to clear any scale. Now, because we are animating, I'm going to turn on this button right here and this is the auto key. And so this way, whenever we move a bone, it's automatically going to add a keyframe at that position. So we're going to start by adding all of the blocking poses and so the blocking poses are just going to be the penguin at the bottom of the hill then the penguin up at the top of the hill looking over you and then in a waving pose and then sliding down so we're going to start by just making all of the different blocking poses so to do that let's press three on the numpad that's going to take us to side view and then also something that i want to do is i want to click right here and drag out the outliner and i'm actually going to change the outliner to the camera's view so i'm going to click on this right here and i'm going to change this to the 3d viewport and then i'm going to press zero on the numpad that's going to take me to the camera view and i don't want to be able to preview any of this stuff here so i'm going to scroll my mouse over and then click on this button that's going to hide the gizmo and i'm also going to click on this button right here and that's going to hide the overlays and then i want to be able to see this in the rendered view just to see how it's looking so i'm going to hold down the z button move my mouse up and then let go to go into the rendered view so we can now just see how this is looking as we're animating it so we'll always be able to see how this is looking in the camera's perspective and that could be very helpful when we're animating Animating. So I now want to go into the wireframe view. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go into wireframe and let go. So I'm now going to press G to grab and I'm going to bring the penguin down and I don't want to be able to see the penguin at all. So I'm going to bring him pretty far down. So I'll bring him even farther down so that I can't see him at all. So I'm just looking right there in the corner there and making sure that I can't see him in the camera's view. All right, I'll press three again on the numpad to go to the side view. So I now want to just pose the penguin. So I'm gonna press the period on the numpad and then I'm gonna move over here and also make sure you're on frame one. Make sure you are on frame one uh, so that it's gonna add a keyframe right there on frame one. All right, so just press period on the numpad. That's gonna zoom over to the penguin. I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go back to solid view and let go. So I now just wanna set up his first pose. So I'm gonna select the foot and I'll press R to rotate. Select this foot, press R to rotate. Let's also select this foot and I'll press R to rotate and this one as well, R to rotate. And we're just gonna kind of rotate that up kind of like that. Um, and then I'm also gonna double tap the A key to select everything and I'm gonna rotate the penguin back a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna press Control Z to undo that because I don't want it to be set to the individual origins because that's gonna rotate the entire thing and kind of bend it. Instead, I wanna change this to a median point so change the pivot point to median point, and then when we rotate that, the penguin's gonna stay in his position, but be rotated. So I wanna kind of bring his neck forward, so I'm gonna select the neck, kind of rotate that forward, and then select the head and rotate that back. And also I wanna select this bone and kind of rotate the whole thing forward a little bit. And also I'm gonna select this bone right here, kind of where the chest is, and I'm gonna rotate that forward a little bit. And then I will rotate this back because he's climbing up the hill. So he's kind of going to be moved forward so that he can stay up. But then he is going to be looking up because he's going up the hill. And then I also don't want those uh, arms to be way out like that. So I'm just going to select the arms, press R to rotate, R to rotate, just kind of rotate that back and select this one here. And I'll press R to rotate, just kind of rotate that down, kind of bring these back there like that. All right. So now the penguin is just kind of looking up. And I'm also going to hold down the Z button, go into the material preview and let go. And if you want to, you can select the eyes and then click right here. We're going to change this back to the individual origins. And that way you can double tap the R key and just rotate the eyes together and just kind of make the eyes looking up. All right. So that is going to be the first pose. Now I want to make sure there are keyframes on all of these bones. So what I'm going to do is double tap the A key to make sure all the bones are selected. And then I'm going to press I and we want to go right down here 
and we want to insert location and rotation and scale um, and that's going to add keyframes to all those bones now we do have the auto key on so the auto key is automatically going to add keyframes when we move the bones but there were some bones that we didn't move and I just want to make sure there are location rotation and scale keyframes on all the bones so that when we move him he's not going to change at all he's going to stay in that position on frame one so that is the first pose on frame one so I'm now going to move over to frame a hundred so you can click right here and drag with your timeline drag that little blue line and we're going to go all the way over to frame 100 you can also change this value right here and that's going to change it so i'm going to change it to frame 100 and at frame 100 i want the penguin to be all the way up at the top of the hill so i'm going to press three on the numpad to go to side view and then i'm going to hold down the z button go to wireframe and let go and then i can press g to grab and let's bring this all the way up and we're going to stick him right there and you can kind of look in the camera's view see how that's looking and then i want to also press alt r and then that will clear any rotations so now he's just standing there at the top of the hill i'm going to hold the z button down go to solid view and let go we can see how that's looking now it is a little bit hard to see if the penguin's actually touching the floor so i'm going to add a shadow to so that it's easier to see if the penguin is actually on the ground so to add the shadow i'm going to click right here on this little drop down and i'm going to go right down here and turn on the shadow and then also if you click on this go to the shadow you can change the shadow amount like how strong you want to be and also if you click right over here on the gear you can change this little light direction so you can just click and drag and change that light direction and now we can see how far it is away from the ground and that's really good so I'm gonna press G to grab and bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it right there on the top of the hill on top of that snowy hill all right so now I also want to bring the arms down so I'm gonna select the arms and I'll press R to rotate we'll rotate that down select this arm we'll press R to rotate we're gonna rotate that down as well just kind of rotate those down okay maybe just bring his arms back just a little kind of like that and then I also want him to just be looking off this way a little bit so I'm going to select the neck and we'll press R to rotate kind of rotate that over also select the head and we can press R to rotate just kind of make him rotating his head over a little bit and I am also looking over here in the corner to kind of see how that's looking in the rendered view and I also want to bring his legs out a little bit so I'm going to select the foot I'll press R to rotate. We can rotate this on the Z axis and then also select this one, press R to rotate. We'll rotate that on the Z axis and just bring that foot out a little bit. Maybe also rotate that arm up a little. All right, so that is the next pose. So I wanna add keyframes to all of those values again. So what I wanna do is press the A key to select all the bones. I'm gonna press I and then I'm gonna insert location, rotation, and scale. So it's gonna add keyframes to all those bones on frame 100. Now, if you scrub back and forth between one and 100, you can see that he's kind of moving, but I actually don't want that to be moving right now because that is kind of distracting. And so what I wanna do is I wanna make the keyframe interpolation set to consistent. That way it's gonna be a consistent interpolation. So we're not gonna see anything in between the keyframes. It's just gonna go from one keyframe to the next keyframe. And I'm just doing that for now as we are in the blocking stage. But once we're out of the blocking stage, then I'll turn it back to a smooth animation. So what I'm gonna do is press A in the timeline to make sure those keyframes are selected. And I'm gonna press T and T is gonna bring up the set keyframe interpolation. And I want to change this to consistent. So right now it's set to BZA and that is the default and it's nice and smooth. I wanna set it to consistent. And now if I play through this, you can press the space bar to play. You can see he doesn't move all the way up until the next keyframe and then he moves. So that way we can just make the blocking. We can just make all the different poses, all the base poses. and then. When once we're done with that, we can add more keyframes in between. So I now want to move over to a frame 120. And at frame 120, I want the penguin to be looking at the camera. So I'm going to select the neck bone and I can press R to rotate. Let's rotate this around on the Z axis so he's looking more towards you. We can also select the head bone. I'll press R to rotate on the Z axis and move that over a little bit, kind of like that. And then also I'm gonna select the eye and then shift select the other eye. And because we have this here, the transform pivot pivot point set to individual origins. I can now double tap the R key. And if you look right up there in the corner over there, you can kind of see how that's looking. So I can zoom in there, just kind of see the penguin's face. I can double tap the R key and just kind of rotate that around. And the eyes are gonna look directly at the camera, kind of like that. All right, and then I also wanna make the eyebrows just come up a little bit. So I'm gonna shift select the eyebrows. I can press R to rotate, just kind of rotate the eyes, eyebrows up a little bit. Um, something like that. And then also I wanna maybe just bring his arms out just a little 
kind of like that. And then I also want to rotate this foot over a little bit. So I'm going to select the foot. I'll press R to rotate. We're going to rotate it on the Z axis and I'll just rotate that foot over just a little, kind of like that. All right. So now we can go back and forth between this and you can see he's kind of looking over there and then he's kind of looking back and that's looking really great. So now at frame 140, I want him to be waving. So I'm going to move this over to frame 140. Let's also press control S again to save our project. And now I'm going to make him waving. Now, before we make him waving at frame 120, I want to make sure that I add keyframes on frame 120. So again, double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected. And then you can press I and I want to insert location, rotation and scale. So now we've added keyframes to all those bones. So let's go over to frame 140 now and we can make him waving. So I'm going to select the shoulder. I'll press R to rotate, rotate that up, kind of rotate the shoulder forward. I can also just select the arm. Let's rotate that up and then select the other pieces of the arm and just kind of rotate that up. And also I want to rotate the arm a little bit. So I'm going to rotate it more sideways, kind of like that. You could also double tap the R key to use the trackball rotation. I'll just kind of rotate that up as well. And then also I want to make his mouth opening. So I'm going to press R to rotate on this piece right here. You can also rotate it on the X axis. So I'm actually going to press R to rotate and then double tap the X key. And that way it's going to rotate out like that. Okay. And then I can also rotate this up. So I'll press R to rotate, double tap the X key and just kind of bring that up a little bit. And then I also want to make his eyebrows a lot higher. So I'm going to select the eyebrow bone shift, select the other one, and I can press R to rotate. And we're just going to rotate those eyebrows up a little bit, kind of like that. Okay. Now I also want to make them kind of rotating over a bit. So I'm going to select the main bone here. That's going to move everything. And I can rotate that over, just kind of rotate his whole body over. And then we can kind of rotate his chest back a little bit or more to the side. We can rotate his neck over and then rotate his head back a little bit. So he's kind of moving over like that. Maybe even rotate that over a little bit and bring that back a little bit. Okay. And then I also want to bring him up. So I'm going to select this main bone. I'll press G to grab, just kind of bring that up a bit. And then I can select the bone here for the foot. I can press R to rotate and let's rotate that over a little bit and then rotate it down a little bit. Maybe also bring it down and rotate that foot up. So I want to make this foot look like it's pushing off of the ground. So what I'm going to do is select this foot bone here. We'll press R to rotate, rotate that down and then rotate the foot up a little bit and just kind of push it out to the side. And we can also rotate it over on the Z axis even more. Just kind of bring that out to the side there. So he looks like he's kind of pushing off the ground. You can see his whole body over here is kind of coming up because he's going up like this and kind of waving at you. So his body over here is going to rotate up more. All right, so just like that, kind of rotate that over. We can also rotate this arm up a little bit, just kind of rotate the arm out, maybe bring it back just a little, something like that, that's looking pretty good. And then also the eyes are kind of going slightly away, so I need to select the eye, shift select the other eye, and then just kind of look in here in the rendered view, double tap the R key, and you can hold down the shift key after you double tap the R key to make your movements more sensitive and just kind of move that around to about there. So he's looking right at you. All right. So there we go. That's the next pose. So I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything. And then I'm going to press I. And again, we want to insert location and rotation and scale just to make sure all the bones have keyframes at that position. Let's press control S again to save the project. So I'm now going to move over to frame 170 and from frame 140 to frame 170, he's going to be waving. So he's still going to be waving, but he's going to be about done waving. So what I'm going to do is actually click on this bone right here. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I'm also going to select this and I'll rotate it back just a little. And I'm also going to select this uh, foot bone and just kind of rotate that up a little and also bring this down. All right, so he's a little bit more relaxed now. And then I can also select this arm. Let's rotate the arm down a little bit and just kind of rotate it back a little. And then also I want to close his mouth. So I'm going to select this mouth bone and I'm going to press Alt R. That's going to clear the rotation and also select this one here. And I'll press Alt R. That's going to clear the rotation. And then I'm going to select the arm and just move it a little bit. Just move it a little bit kind of like that. All right. So then in between here, in between 140 and 170, we will make him waving back and forth. So we'll go in here later and make him waving. But for now, I just want to do the main blocking poses. All right. So I'm now going to go over to frame 190 and at frame 190, I want him to be not waving anymore and just kind of looking down because he's about to jump down and then slide down the hill. So what I can do is I can actually use the same keyframes from frame 120 and 
to just kind of edit it a little bit. So I'm going to go back to frame 120 and then I'm going to double tap the A key to select all the bones. And then in the timeline, I'll press A to deselect everything. I'll now press B for the box select, just box select those keyframes on frame 120. And I can press Shift D to duplicate and we're going to bring them all the way over to frame 190. You can go to frame 190 and now you can see that it's back to that pose. And so I now want him to be kind of looking over and looking down a little bit. So I can now just edit this. So I'm going to select the neck. Let's rotate this over on the Z axis. We can also select the head bone, rotate that over on the Z axis. I also want him to be just going forward a little bit. So I'm going to select these bones here, kind of rotate that over, rotate that over. And we can also select this and rotate that over a little bit. And then I also want him to be looking more straight and down. So I'm gonna select this eye, shift select this eye. I can now double tap the R key and just kind of move that over and also double tap the R key again, make him kind of looking down a little bit. I also wanna bring his wings back a little bit. So I'm just gonna rotate the wings back a little bit, kind of like that and select this one. We're gonna rotate that back as well and kind of bring it in there, something like that. And then I also want to select his feet, just kind of rotate them in a little bit. So you can select the foot bone and then press R to rotate, rotate it on the Z axis and just kind of rotate that back a little bit. All right, something like that, that's pretty good. And then again, this is another default pose here on frame 190. So I'm gonna press I again with all the bones selected, press A to select all the bones, press I and we're gonna insert location, rotation and scale. All right, so we're now gonna go over to frame 200 and he's gonna be jumping. So I'm gonna go over to the side here and then I'm going to select this and I'll press G to grab and I'll press R to rotate that. We're just gonna kind of move him forward. We're also gonna move his neck up. So let's rotate his neck up and rotate his head up. And then we're also going to select the feet, kind of rotate the feet down a little bit, but then the, the very front of the feet, we're gonna rotate that up a little bit, something like that. Okay, that's pretty good. We're also gonna rotate the wings back a little bit, not quite that far, but just kind of rotate those shoulders back a little bit and rotate the wings back a little bit. We'll do that for the other side as well. Just kind of rotate that up and a little bit more back. And I also want his mouth to be opening a little bit. So I'm going to select this bone right here. I'll press R to rotate, double tap the X key. So it rotates on the local X axis of that bone. And then just kind of open his mouth like that. And also I want his eyebrows to be up a lot. So I'm going to select the eyebrow, shift select the other eyebrow bone. We can rotate those eyebrows up like that. And then also I think I'm just gonna select this main bone and just kind of rotate the whole thing over a little bit more. All right, so that's the main pose for frame 200. So I'm gonna double tap the A key. We're gonna press I again to insert a keyframe and I'm gonna do the location, rotation, and scale. So I'm now gonna go over to frame 210 and at frame 210, he's gonna be on the ground. So I will select this bone. I'll press R to rotate and G to grab. R to rotate and G to grab, and we're gonna stick that belly there on the ground. And then he's gonna kind of look up. So he's gonna be like a penguin sliding in the Antarctic, sliding on the snow or the ice. So let's rotate the neck up so we can kind of look up more. Let's also select this bone right here, kind of his chest bone, rotate that up as well. I can also bring the whole thing down a little bit if I need to. And then I can rotate the feet up a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna press G to grab and just kind of bring the feet up a little bit. So we'll rotate that up and also rotate the feet over a little bit so they're just a little more straight. And also we could kind of rotate this back here so just rotate that tail back a little bit. And then let's also close his mouth. So I'm gonna select that mouth bone and I'll press Alt R to clear the rotation. And then we can also select the head bone, rotate that back a little bit more. And then I also wanna make his eyes looking up. So I'm gonna select the eye bone, shift select the other eye bone. And then I can press R to rotate, rotate that eye up and just kind of make him so he's looking forward. Okay, something like that. You can kind of see how that's looking from the camera's view. And we will animate the camera kind of moving back so you can kind of see him jumping down. All right, that is pretty good. And also I do want to go up here to top view and I want to rotate his wings out just a little. So maybe he's using those uh, arms to maybe steer as he's going down the hill. All right, so that is the next pose. So double tap the A key to select everything. I'm gonna press I and then let's insert location, rotation, and scale. So now you can see that at frame 190, he stops waving and then he jumps and then he slides. So now at the end here, we'll just make a few more keyframes of him sliding down and then at frame 250, it will end. So we're gonna go to frame 120 and I now just wanna move the whole thing down. So I'm gonna double tap the A key to select everything. I can press G to grab 
and R to rotate. And actually, I don't want to rotate the whole thing together like that because that's going to kind of rotate him around. Um, it's going to kind of rotate each part. So I'm just going to select this bone here and I can press R to rotate and G to grab. Let's also press seven on the numpad for top view and just kind of see how that's going. Rotate that over kind of bring that down a little bit and kind of rotate him looking down more. Okay, so we're now gonna to go to frame 230. We're gonna bring this even farther down and I'm gonna to try to make it about the same amount going down so that it's kind of smooth, um, but we can adjust that later if we need to. And at frame 230, I also need to bring it down farther. So I'm gonna to go to frame 240 now and let's just bring this way down here, kind of rotate it down and that's gonna be the last one. Actually, I will just go over to frame 250 and bring it down a bit farther, but we're not gonna be seeing the penguin at this point. So we can just play through that and see how that's looking and then double tap the a key and that is going to show you all the keyframes and we can now play through this so I'm going to play through it. Let's go to frame 100. We can also look at this in the camera's perspective. So you can really get an idea about how the animation is without seeing all the little details like moving the eyes or the eyebrows or little things like that. And so now if you want to change the timing, now's the time to do that. So for instance, if you wanted him to walk up the hill faster, then you could bring this over. So on frame 100, you could box select these keyframes and then bring them over maybe to frame 80 if you wanted to do that. I like how this timing is. I specifically set up this timing to how I like but if you want him to move faster or, or if you want to change the main blocking poses now is the time to do that so play through this and just get the timing to how you like of all the keyframes so again if you want to move one of these main block keyframes you can make sure everything's deselected in the timeline by pressing a and then you can press b for the box select just box select one of these keyframes and press G to grab and that is going to move that around and then you can change the timing of those keyframes. I'm going to press Control S again to save and now I'm going to make the animation linear. So I'm going to double tap the A key in the timeline to select all the keyframes and I'm going to press T and this time I'm going to click on linear. So now if we play through this it's going to go from one keyframe to the next keyframe and it's not going to speed up or slow down at all and we can now use this step of the animation to add more keyframes. So we're going to add a bunch more keyframes in between all these keyframes. For instance we're going to make him waving and we're also going to make him walking up the hill and things like that and then after that we will smooth out the animation with the BZA interpolation. But for now the linear interpolation is really helpful just to block out the poses even more and kind of add some more detail to the animation. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make him walking from frame one to frame 100. So I'm first going to go to frame 50 and at frame 50 that is right in between one and 100. So I now just want to navigate over here and I want to stick that where it needs to be. So he's already moving up. He's already moving to where we want kind of in the middle because Blender is already calculating that because it's going from frame one to 100. So he's already where we need him to be. So I can just press G to grab and move him up here because he needs to be standing on top of the snow so I'll kind of bring him up like that um, but now you can see that we've added a keyframe there um, at frame 50 he's now all the way up there so that's good um, I still want to kind of block this a bit more now you can see that he's looking really high up and I don't want that anymore because he's mostly at the top of the hill now so I'm gonna select this neck and I'll press R to rotate and we'll select this piece I'll press R to rotate that down and just kind of rotate that over and also we can select the neck and just kind of rotate that over a little bit so he's looking a bit more straight kind of rotate that up a little bit. And we also need to bring the entire body up and also bring the feet up a little bit so that the feet are not going through the snow. It's okay if the feet are going through the snow a little bit because you know you can walk through snow and the snow kind of crunches down, um, but I don't want him to be going that much through the snow. So I'm just gonna rotate those feet up until it's like that so that his feet are on top of the snow. You can also look at this in the camera's perspective and see how that is looking. All right, so now that I've set that keyframe right there, I'm gonna go back and every 10 frames, I'm going to make him walking. So I'm first gonna go to frame 10 and I'll press period on the numpad to kind of zoom over to him. So I'm gonna press G to grab, just kind of move the penguin up, kind of move him up like that. And then I wanna make him waddling back and forth. So I'm gonna select this bone here, the main bone, and I'm gonna rotate this over a little bit so that he's rotating rotated a bit more sideways. Okay, so kind of like that. So he's just rotated over sideways a bit. Also bring him up just a little. All right, so I'm now gonna move over to frame 20. And at frame 20, I want him to be kind of moving over the opposite direction. So I'm gonna press R to rotate, kind of rotate that over and make sure he's not going through the snow too much. Rotate that up a little bit. So now he's gonna be rotated over. So this foot is gonna be more in the front. 
All right, so you can see now at frame 10, he's kind of rotated over that way. And then at frame 120, he kind of rotates over. So we're gonna go now to frame 130 and we're going to press R to rotate. Just kind of rotate that over, rotate that up a little bit and make him going a bit more that way. So he's kind of rotating back and forth. Okay, rotate that up a little bit. Let's go now to frame 40. And at frame 40, we're gonna rotate this back again. Just kind of rotate that over, kind of bring it up a little bit. So now if we go back here and play that, let's just play the animation, you can see he's kind of moving back and forth. So I'm now gonna to go to frame 50, and at frame 50, he's gonna be back over this way. So I'm gonna go back over here. Let's rotate this back over a little bit like that. Maybe rotate that up a little bit. Okay, let's go back over there and kind of play that. So he's kind of walking up the hill, going back and forth. So I'm now gonna to go to frame 60, and we need to kind of bring the whole body up because he was kind of going into the snow there. So on frame 50, he's a little bit more over here. So on frame 60, we wanna to go to frame 60, and we just wanna rotate him over a little bit more that way. Okay, we'll go to frame 70, and we're gonna bring him up again because he's going through the snow a little bit, and we're gonna make him going back over this way. So over to his right. Okay, rotate that back. Let's go back there and just watch that. Okay, that's good. So we're now gonna go to frame 80. He's gonna go a little bit more towards the left again. So we'll rotate that over, make sure he's not going through the ground. Okay, then we'll go to 90, and at frame 90, he's gonna be a little bit more to the right. Okay, make sure he's not going through the snow again. So let's press Control S again to save our project, and then we can go back here and kind of play this. All right, so that is looking really cool. So I now want to go back to frame 10, and we are going to animate the feet. And then we're gonna go back every 10 frames and kind of animate the feet. So whenever he is rotating, whichever side is rotating more towards the camera or towards the top of the hill, the foot is gonna be coming out a bit. So so if we go to this one right here on frame 10, you can see he's rotating this way. So I'm gonna select this foot and I'll press G to grab and R to rotate and rotate that over. We're also gonna rotate the foot up a little bit and just bring it forward a bit. And then over here on this foot, we're gonna rotate that back a bit. So I'm gonna rotate this back kind of bring that back. So it almost will look like he's pushing away from the ground because he's gonna be pushing away with this foot and then kind of stepping forward with this foot. So we're just gonna kind of set it to a pose like that. So now you can see that this foot is over more forward and then this foot is just a little bit more back. So I'm now gonna go to frame 20 and we're going to reverse that. So we're gonna switch it. So now we are going to rotate this foot back. So this foot is gonna be back, kind of rotate it to the side a little bit bring it back a little bit more. We'll go over to this foot, and this foot is gonna be forward. It's gonna be up a bit more. We can also select this one here, and we're gonna rotate that up, rotate that over. So now you can see that this foot is kind of stepping forward as his body rotates forward. All right, so we've done that at frame 10 and frame 20. So what I can do is I can actually just duplicate frame 10 and 20 and just duplicate it all the way to 100. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the shift key and just shift select the four bone objects and then hover your mouse over the timeline and I'm going to press A and that is going to deselect the keyframes. I'm now gonna press B for the box select and I'm gonna drag a box around frame 10 and 20. And because we only have the feet selected, it's only going to select the keyframes for those feet. So I'm now going to press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to bring this over to frame 30 and frame 40. So we can now just play through that, and you can see it's going to switch that movement. And then I can press Shift D again. We're going to stick that there, so at frame 50 and 60, and it's going to continue to copy those keyframes. And then we're also going to press Shift D to duplicate again, and we're going to stick that at 70 and 80, and then press Shift D again to duplicate, and we're going to move this over to 90 and 100. So I can now just play through this, and you can see the feet are walking. All right, so we need to go back and change some things because you can see those feet are like rotated way up, and that's because when he was walking up the hill, his feet had to be rotated up a lot, but then as the hill gets less and less of a slope, his feet need to be rotated more back and forth. So what I'm going to do is go to frame 40, and let's just see how that is. That's actually pretty good, but I will just select this foot and rotate that down a little bit. And then let's move over to frame 50. Let's see how that's looking. So this foot, I can bring that up a little bit and just rotate that down. And you're not able to see that in the camera view yet. Um, so we don't have to get it super, super close. Let's go to frame 60. And then this one, we need to rotate that down because it's kind of just going back. So we will rotate this back, kind of stick it down there into the snow. But then this foot, I can bring that forward a little bit and also make it coming up like that because this foot is stepping forward. So I'm now gonna go to frame 70 and just make sure this is down, kind of rotate that over on the Z axis and just kind of rotate that down a bit. But then this foot is stepping forward so it can be up like that. 
So now let's go over to frame 80. Let's see how that's looking. So you can see that is really high up. So I just need to rotate that down, select this bone right here, rotate that down. We'll rotate that over a little bit. Okay, see how that is. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go to frame 90 now. We'll do the same thing. So select this one, rotate that down. We can also bring this foot back a little bit and rotate it back on the z-axis a little bit. All right, let's play through that, see how that's looking. So that's already looking a lot better. I do need to rotate this one down quite a bit more though. Let's go back here, see how that's looking at frame 80, that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go to frame 100 now. And right here on this foot now, we need to rotate that back and rotate it down so that it's kind of pressing into the snow there. All right, so let's take a look at that now. We'll just play through that and see how that's looking. And that is definitely looking better. So I'm now gonna go over to frame 120 and you can see where the feet are. So I want those feet to be right there at frame 100 as well, because at frame 100, that's when he stops moving. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the shift key and just select all of the feet bones. I'm going to, in the timeline, press A to deselect all the keyframes. And then using the box select, I'm just gonna box select the keyframes at frame 120. I can now press shift D, shift D will duplicate them. And I'm gonna bring them over to frame 100. So now if I play through this, you can see the feet are where they need to be. Let's press Control S again to save. All right, so we're now gonna go all the way back to frame 10. And this time we're gonna go back here and go all along these keyframes, but we're going to make the arms or the wings kind of swinging back and forth. So let's press period on the numpad to kind of zoom over here. So if he's swinging to the side this way, these arms are gonna be rotated a bit more this way and a bit more in. So kind of like that. And then let's go to frame 20 and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna rotate this back and then rotate this arm forward or this wing forward so that as he swings over, the arms are gonna kind of hang down a little bit. Let's go over to frame 30 now. We're gonna rotate that back. We'll click on this one, rotate that forward a little bit. Okay, we can go to frame 40 now and we can rotate this back a little bit and rotate this one out a little bit, kind of like that. I'm actually gonna go back into the solid view to do this because it's a little bit less laggy. When you're previewing the material, it does look a little bit laggy in the viewport. So I'm gonna go to frame 50 now. We'll rotate that back and rotate this one out. Maybe bring that forward just a little, rotate it back. So you can kind of see if we go back and forth, you can see how those arms are kind of swinging just a little. Let's go to frame 60, rotate this one back and rotate this one over. We can go to frame 70 now and we will rotate this one in and then rotate it back a little bit and then rotate this one out there. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Play through that. We'll go to frame 80 and now he's not quite swinging quite as much but we will just have his arms moving back and forth a little. We can go to frame 90 and then just rotate that up and rotate that up just a little. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go back to frame 10 now. And I wanna go to the side and just kind of rotate his arms a little bit. All right, so we can just play through that. I'm gonna look at the rendered preview and that's looking pretty cool. All right, so I am now ready to turn on the smooth animation. So just press Control S again to save. And then I'm gonna double tap the A key in the 3D space to select all the bones and then double tap the A key in the top timeline to select all the keyframes. I'm now gonna press T, and this time I wanna change it to BZA. So now that we've changed it to BZA, let's just play through this. I'm actually going to make this a lot bigger so we can see it much better. And let's just play through that and see how that's looking. What I'm actually gonna do is hover my mouse over this view right here and press control space bar and that's gonna make it full screen. And then I can play through that and see how that's looking. It's slightly laggy in the viewport, but it's pretty good. All right, there we go, that's looking pretty cool. So we still need to add a lot more keyframes to it because he didn't really wave, but that is looking pretty cool. So let's make this smaller again. I'm gonna press control space bar and that is going to minimize that window. Or if you've maximized it, you can also click on the back to previous right up here. Let's press control S again to save. All right, so from frame 120, to frame 170, I want him to be waving. So we're gonna go in between here and we're gonna add keyframes every five frames and make him waving back and forth. So I'm first gonna go over to frame 140, that is when his arm is up, and then I'm gonna go over to frame 145. So we're now just gonna have his arm rotating. So I'm gonna select the arm piece and I'll press R to rotate. Also select the shoulder piece, R to rotate. Just kind of rotate this down a little bit, kind of like that. Okay, let's play through this. Okay, I'm gonna go back to frame 150 
and I'm gonna rotate this back up a little bit, kind of rotate that up there and rotate this up. Okay, I think I wanna go back to frame 145 and rotate this down a little bit more just so that his wave is a little bit bigger. Okay, and then let's go to frame 155 and we're going to rotate that back again, rotate that down a little bit. And you can see that his face is kind of rotating back down to 170. And so I actually want him to still be looking at you at frame 170. So what I'm gonna do is go to frame 140 and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just shift select all of the face objects. And as well as that, I wanna shift and select the head and the neck. So just all of those, so the neck, head, and the face. I'm now gonna press A in the timeline to deselect the keyframes, and then I'm gonna press B for the box select. Just box select all those keyframes on 140, and I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm gonna bring them all the way over to 170. So now his face is going to stay the same. Now I do want his mouth to close, so let's make his mouth close a bit earlier. So I'm gonna to go to frame 160, and then I'm going to select this object here, or this bone, and I'm gonna press Alt R, that'll clear the rotation, and also select this other mouthpiece and press Alt R. So that way he opens his mouth, but then he closes it. And then you can see that his mouth opens back up at frame 170. So we just need to hold down the shift key and select both of those mouth bones and press Alt R and that'll clear the rotation. All right, so now you can play through this and his mouth opens and then closes. Now you can see that his mouth opens and then closes kind of slowly. And so what I want to do is actually duplicate this keyframe so that his mouth opens quicker, stays open, and then closes. So I'm going to press A to deselect everything. I'm just going to make sure these two mouth pieces are selected. I'm going to press B for the box select and just box select the keyframes at 140. And then I'm going to press G to grab and I'm going to move these back to frame 135. So he's going to, his mouth is going to open and then I'm going to go all the way to frame 150 and I'm going to just make sure those keyframes are still selected right there and I'll press shift D to duplicate them and bring them over so that way his mouth kind of opens up quickly it stays open for longer and then it closes so let's go to frame 60 again and we're going to keep animating the arm so at frame 60 I want to rotate the arm up so he's still waving so I'm going to rotate that up as well rotate that up as well Okay, let's go back here and play that. Okay, so we need to go to frame 65 or 165, and we're gonna rotate that down, rotate that down, and also rotate these pieces down so that he's kind of waving. Let's go back here and take a look at that. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to frame 170 and just kind of rotate that up even more. You could even rotate the neck a little bit sideways and then rotate the head forward a little bit. Okay, let's play through that and see how that's looking. And then as he waves, I want his neck and his head just to kind of rotate a little bit, kind of like his shoulder is kind of moving his neck and his head just a little. So I'm gonna go back here to frame 140 and then I'm just gonna rotate his neck and head moving just a little. So I'm gonna to go to frame 145. Let's rotate his neck back a little bit and rotate his head up just a little and then we can go back to frame 50 we'll rotate the neck back a little bit and his head maybe forward a little bit so you can see now his head is just going to move a little bit as his arm rotates okay rotate that back we'll rotate the head back a little bit so you can kind of see how that's moving it's just moving a little bit let's go to frame 160 bring that back a little bit because the arm is going forward and when the arm is going closer to his head, then his head is gonna move back a little bit. And then as his arm moves down, his neck is gonna move a little bit more towards that arm. All right, so I'm now gonna go back to more of the starting of the animation, and I just wanna add a little bit more details. So like as he's walking up the hill, I want him to kind of look around. Also, as he's looking up the hill, I want him to like, like chirp or kind of open his mouth to like say something and we'll add a little bit of a sound effect there and then he's just gonna kind of look around a little bit so i'm gonna go to frame 50 and at frame 50 i want to make him looking a bit more over here kind of away from the camera let's go into the camera view see how that's looking so i'm gonna rotate him looking over kind of like that and then also we're gonna select the eye so shift select both those eyes and we can rotate that over so he's kind of looking sideways and maybe also rotate the neck over all right, and then let's go back to frame like 30, frame 30, and we can rotate that back a little bit. So at frame 30, he's kind of looking a little bit more this way. So we can also select the eyes, shift select the eyes and double tap the R key and kind of rotate that over. So now if you play through this, you can see he's first looking over here, then he kind of looks over here and just adds more character to him, just kind of as he's 
kind of looking around. He's kind of looking around as he's walking up the hill. And then I want to go over to a frame 70. And at frame 70, I want him to be kind of looking up in the air, kind of like as if he's looking at the clouds in the sky. I'm also going to select the eyes and double tap the R key and kind of make him looking up. And then I also want his mouth to open. So let's go to frame 60. And I want to add a keyframe here on his mouth. So I'm going to shift select both of those bones on the mouth. And I'm going to press I to insert a keyframe. And let's just go location, rotation, and scale. So we've added a keyframe right there on frame 60. Then we're going to go to frame 70. And at frame 70, we're going to open his mouth. So I'm going to select this one. I'll press R to rotate. I'm going to double tap the X key, make that coming up and then select this. We'll press R to rotate and double tap the X key and just kind of rotate that down, make that however big you want. So now he kind of opens his mouth. Then we're gonna to go to frame 80 and we wanna clear the rotations. So I'm gonna shift and select both of those, both of those mouth bones, and I'll press Alt R, that'll clear the rotation. So he's looking up there. All right, that's pretty good. And then as he's getting to the top of the hill at about frame 100 or right before frame 100, I want him to kind of look down at the ground because he's about at the top of the hill. So I'm gonna to go to frame 80 and then I'm going to select the neck bone. We'll double tap the R key, kind of rotate that over, select the head bone, rotate that over as well. You can double tap the R key. All right. And then just kind of rotate it down. I'm also going to select the eye, shift, select the other eye, and then double tap the R key and just kind of make him so he's looking down there. So once he looks up in the sky, he kind of looks down just to kind of see the top of the hill there. And then I'm going to go to frame 100 and I'm actually going to rotate the eyes up a little bit just so that they're looking up a little bit. So I am using this for reference as well up here, just kind of seeing how the final render is going to look. So he kind of looks up there. And so as you can see, what we're doing here is we're adding in all those final little things, adding in just little details of him looking around, of his mouth moving, just little things like that. Um, and also something that I want to do is when he's looking up at frame 70, I want to make his eyebrows come up. So I'm going to select both of the eyebrows and then I can double tap the R key and kind of rotate that up kind of bring that up like that. But then right back over here on frame 50, we'll go to frame 50. I want those eyebrows to be down a little bit. So his eyebrows are going to kind of look up and then we're going to go back to maybe frame 85. Let's go to 85 and then double tap the R key and just make his eyebrows back down to kind of how they were before. And then I'm going to move to frame 110. And at frame 110, I still want his eyes to be over a little bit. And that way they're going to shift faster over to looking at you. So I'm going to select both of the eye bones. And then I'm going to double tap the R key, just kind of make him looking up again. So we can kind of look up. And then he quickly looks over at you. You can kind of see his eyes shift quickly and kind of look over at you. So that's pretty cool. Okay, and then he's gonna wave, and there's the little wave there. And also, um, something I think is kind of cool when he's waving is I wanna make this arm coming out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to frame 140, and I'm gonna rotate that a little bit more out, just kind of rotate that out a little bit, maybe rotate this shoulder up a little bit so he's really kind of opening up his arms there or his wings as he's waving. Okay, and then you can see the arm starts to come down. So what I'm gonna do is go to frame 180, and I'm gonna rotate that arm up so it's still kind of rotated up and then his arm will kind of move down quickly. All right, so the starting of the animation is looking really cool, but I just need to make that animation at the very end. So we pretty much just need to do the jump, and then after the jump, he kind of just slides down, and that animation looks fine, and you're not really gonna see most of this part as he slides down, because he's gonna go out of the camera view. So mainly, we just need to finish up that jump now. Let's press Control S again to save, and then I'm gonna go right over here to frame 195. So at frame 195, I'm going to make him kind of crouching a little bit before he goes into that jump. So you can see he already is starting to crouch a little bit, but I want to make that a little bit more strong. So what I'm going to do is select this bone. I'll press G to grab, just kind of move that down, kind of rotate that over a little bit. I'm also going to rotate his arms back a little bit, just rotate those back a bit. And then also we can kind of move these feet up a little bit more, kind of move those feet up like that, maybe rotate this foot over something like that. And then also we can rotate this head down. So I'm going to rotate his head down, but then kind of bring the head up. So he's kind of just crouching. You can kind of see he's just crouching a little bit. Let's make that a little bit stronger even. So I'm going to bring the whole thing down, just kind of rotate that down. And then we can rotate the chest bone up a little bit. And also we can bring the feet up a little bit more. 
so that he looks more like he's crouching. All right, kind of like that. Let's uh, play through that and see how that's looking. So you can see he just kind of crouches a little bit before he jumps. So he kind of goes down and then up. It kind of looks like his whole body moves down a little bit to frame 195, and then at frame 200, he kind of bounces up a little bit. And also we could make that even stronger by going to frame 200 and just bouncing him up a little bit more. So I'm gonna select the main bone. I'm gonna move him up a little bit, and then I'm going to select the feet and just kind of rotate the feet down. So it looks like he's pushing off the ground and kind of just make that spring a little bit stronger. We can also kind of give it some more momentum by kind of rotating the hands up and let's play through that. So you can see he just kind of goes into it just a little crouch and then he kind of jumps. And also you can see the feet look like they kind of slide a little bit and so I don't want that. So I'm gonna go back to frame 195 and I'm gonna select the main bone and just move it back a little bit because I don't want him to look like he is sliding. So that's looking really good. You can see he kind of crouches and I actually wanna bring the bone forward just a little. So he kind of crouches, but he stays in the same place. And then he kind of jumps and pushes off the ground. And it still looks like his feet are sliding just a little. So I am going to rotate those feet and just kind of bring them back a little bit more so that it looks like he's pushing more off of the ground. Just kind of bring those feet back and really make them look like they're pushing off of the ground. You can look in the camera's perspective just to see how that's looking. Maybe rotate the front of the feet up a little bit. So he just kind of pushes off the ground there. Now I'm also gonna to go to frame 205 and he's gonna be a bit more in the air. So I'm gonna select this main object and kind of bring it up and rotate it over a little bit and kind of push him more in the air. Let's go back and play through this. So I do want him to be kind of actually look like he's jumping. Instead of just going up and then kind of sliding down to the ground, I want him to kind of look like there's more of a rotation there. So he kind of rotates in the air. So at frame 205, 205, I'm just gonna bring that up just a little so he really has a bit of a spring into that jump. And just kind of rotate it over a little bit more as well. So now we can just kind of play through that and see how that's looking. And as you can see, he actually falls a little bit slow. So what I'm gonna do is go to frame 210 and then double tap the A key to make sure all of the bones are selected. I'm now gonna press A to deselect everything in the timeline. And then I'm gonna press B for the box select and just box select these frames on 210. I'm now gonna press G to grab and just kind of bring them forward a little bit closer to frame 205. So you can see now when he falls, he falls a bit faster. And that looks a lot more realistic because you can see before he just kind of falls kind of slowly he almost looks like he's gliding but if you bring this keyframe over just a couple frames he really looks like his weight is kind of pushing him down because of gravity and so after he jumps he falls pretty fast so that's looking really good so as you can see adding those little things like the little crouch there and changing the timing all those little things can really help to make the animation look more realistic and then another thing that I want to do is I want his eyes to be looking up right before he jumps. So what I'm going to do is go to frame 190 and I'm going to select the eyes, just shift select both of those eyes and let's rotate those up. So he's kind of looking more up. So he's going to kind of look up and then he's going to jump. And I'm going to go to frame 200 now and also rotate the eyes up a little bit. But then as he rotates down, down to 208, I want him to be looking down a bit more. So I'm going to rotate his eyes down to 208. So now he's kind of looking up a little bit. And then as he jumps, he kind of looks down a little bit more to where he's landing. Let's just uh, see how that's looking. That's a bit better. All right, and I am gonna call this done for the animation. Now we are still going to be animating the camera, but the animation for the character is finished. So let's press Control S again to save. So the camera animation is really easy to do. We're just going to select the camera. Let's go back into the solid view. And also I'm gonna turn on the overlays. I just turned them off just that I can preview that. So I need to go back into object mode. So I'm gonna press Control Tab and that is going to take me back to object mode. And then I'm going to select the camera. So I'm now just gonna add a basic animation to the camera. So I'm gonna to go to frame one. And at frame one, I'm gonna double tap the R key and just kind of move the camera over so it's looking over at these mountains. I'm now gonna play the animation and I'm going to go to like frame 40 and at frame 40 I'm going to double tap the R key and just kind of hold down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive and just kind of rotate that over so the camera's looking over at the penguin so you can just play through this and you can see he kind of looks over let's actually make that a little bit longer so I'm going to press G to grab and just kind of move that keyframe there just so it's a little bit slower of an animation and on this first keyframe here I'm actually going to press G to grab I just select the keyframe and press G to grab and I'm going to move it back here into the negative and so that way when you play the animation it's automatically going to be moving so the camera's already going to be moving so I'm now going to go over to frame 100 now at frame 100 I'm going to double tap the R key and then hold down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive and just look at the penguin I can also press G to grab and then double tap the Z key and just kind of pull this out a little bit so it's a bit farther 
something like that. Okay, let's play through that. All right, that's pretty good. So I'm now going to move over to frame 140. And at frame 140, I'm going to double tap the R key, bring that over. So you're looking more at the penguin and then press G to grab and double tap the Z key and just bring that in a little bit just so that you're really looking at him, especially when he's waving. And then I'm going to go to frame 190 and I'll just double tap the R key, just kind of rotate that down a little bit. And then also I can bring the camera back a little bit by pressing G to grab and then double tapping the Z key and bring that back a little bit, just so that there's a little bit of camera animation right there. All right. And then I'm going to move to frame 210 and I'm going to press G to grab and double tap the Z key and bring that out quite a bit. So you can see more the penguin and then double tap the R key and kind of rotate that down so that I can kind of see the penguin as he's jumping. So the camera is going to kind of move out to give the penguin more space. And then I'm going to move all the way to frame 250 and I'm going to double tap the R key, just kind of rotate that over rotate that and also maybe bring it back a little bit just bring the camera back a little bit. All right, let's just play through that see how that's looking. That's pretty cool. Now the camera does move pretty fast from frame 190 to 210. So I'm just gonna select these keyframes and just kind of pull them back so that they're a little bit farther from each other. Um, and that way the camera won't move quite as fast. All right, there we go. And then you can also see here in the final render that you're able to see like the green grass right there. So what I'm going to do is click on this button here to turn off the auto key, because what I'm going to do is select the mountains right here. And I'm going to just press shift D to duplicate them and just move them back here. And I'm just going to put some more mountains in the back here just so that you can't see um, that green stuff there. So you can just see the sky. Let's play through that, see how that's looking. I'm actually just gonna go into the rendered view and I can click on this button to hide the overlays and I'll just play through that and see how that's looking. And also there is one really cool setting you can turn on so that you can see what the final render is gonna look like better. So if you select the camera, I need to turn on the overlays and just select the camera. I can go right down here to the object data properties and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna go here to the viewport display. And then right here, this pass a par out if that's how you pronounce it. I don't quite know how to pronounce it. If you turn up this value, it's going to make everything around the camera darker. And that way you can really see what the final render is going to look like. And then I'll just turn off the show overlay so you can't see the overlays. And let's just play through this and see how it's looking. That's pretty cool. And then of course, if you want to go back and change anything, you can totally do that with the animation if you see anything that you want to change. And then one other thing I want to do, you can see the camera stops moving at frame 250. So I'm actually just going to select the last keyframe here from the camera and I'm going to bring it over to like 260. And that way the camera is still going to be moving just a little bit at the very end. All right. And that is it. So all of the animation is now finished. So we're now going to be rendering these out to images and then in Blender's video editor, we will video edit them together and we're also going to add some sound effects. So let's just finish this up. So I'm going to go right over here to the output properties and I'm going to render this as a 2K resolution. Now, if the resolution is bigger, then it's going to take longer to render. So you could just render it with 1080p. So that would be the default of 1920 by 1080. I'm going to render this with a 2K resolution and then let's set the output because we need to save our frames. So I'm going to click Click on this button right here to set an output. And then in the folder with all my other files, I'm going to click on the plus here to create a new folder and I can just call this frames. Let's go inside the frames folder and then I'm just going to click on the accept button right here. And then for the file format, you could use PNG, but I'm going to be using the JPEG and that way the file size is going to be a bit smaller. And then I'm also going to turn the quality up to a hundred percent. So let's just press F12 to render this just to kind of see if it's looking good. Uh, we'll wait for that to finish and it rendered in Eevee. So it rendered really quickly and then it did the compositing. So in the previous part, we did the compositing. So if for some reason you didn't see that, you can go back and watch the previous part, part six, where we did the compositing, um, but that's really good. And also if you are using the cycles render engine, then there might be a little bit of noise or some grain. So if you are using the cycles render engine, then what I would do is go over to the compositing and I would press shift A and I would search for the denoise node and I would just drop the denoise node right here after the render layers. And then also here, if you wanna make this faster on the pre-filter, I would just change this to fast. And that way the denoise node is just going to smooth out the image and get rid of a lot of that noise. I'm using Blender EV though, so I'm not gonna need this. So I'm going to select the node and press control X to delete that. And control X is going to delete the node, but it'll still keep this wire plugged up. All right, so I am now going to render the animation. So just make sure before you 
render the animation, press Control S to save your project. And then you can press Control F12, or you can click on render and render animation. And I'll come back when the render is finished. All right, and the render finished. So I'm just gonna press Control S again to save. And now I'm gonna open up a new video editing file. So to do that, I'm gonna click on file. And let's go right down here to new and I'm going to open up a new video editing and it's going to open up the video editing layout. And then also I don't really need this over here. So I'm just going to close it. So I'm going to hover my mouse over here when the crosshair appears and then I'll click drag over and then drag back and then let go just to close that. All right, so we're now gonna add in the image sequence. So what I'm gonna do right here in the timeline is press Shift A, and I'm gonna go right down here and add image or sequence. And then we're just gonna locate to the folder where we saved all of the rendered frames. And then I'm gonna press A to select everything. Now it's actually gonna open up in the wrong direction. It's gonna play backwards, and so I just need to switch the frames before we add them in. So what I'm gonna do is click on this little drop down right here, click on the drop down over here, and then I'm gonna click on reverse sorting. That way it's going to start at frame one and then it's going to go down. So let's now click on add image strip. So if you press the space bar to play, that is going to play that. And you can see now the penguin is walking up. And then I also want to set the correct render size. So I'm going to click right here on strip. Just make sure you have the strip selected. Click on strip and I'm going to click on the set render size. And my one was at a 2K image. So 2560 by 1440. That is the resolution that I was using. So I can now just play through this and we can watch the animation. All right, so let's add some sound effects now to this animation. So in the first part of the tutorial series, I talked about all the sound effects that we're going to be using. So they are free sound effects from a website called freesound.org, and the links to the sound effects are in the video description. So there's four free sound effects that we're going to be using from freesound.org, and they're all licensed as Creative Commons Zero. So once you've downloaded the sound effects, I'm just going to add them into Blender. So I have my file browser right up here, and I'm just going to drag in the first sound effect. So the first sound effect is going to be the gentle breeze wind. And I'm just going to press G to grab and I'm going to move this sound effect over here. And then I'm also going to click on the display waveforms so that I can see those waveforms. And then if you want to make this bigger, you can hold down the control key and then click with your middle mouse wheel. And then you can change the size of this. You can also just click with your mouse wheel and that is going to move around. And you can also scale this in or out if you want to. And then to play the timeline, you can press the space bar and that's going to play it. And we can play the timeline and listen to that. And I'm basically just adding this gentle breeze in the background to make it sound like he's in the Arctic or some cold, windy area. Now it is just a little bit loud because I do want it to be kind of quiet and in the background. So I'm gonna turn this volume down. I'm just gonna turn it down to maybe like a 0.7. All right, let's add in the next sound effect. So the next sound effect that I'm gonna be adding is the snowboard sound effects. Let's just drag this in and drop it in here and then we can play it. And it is kind of loud right now. So I'm gonna turn down the volume, maybe just down to like a 0.5 or maybe even smaller. Let's play through that. Actually, I had my volume turned up a little bit, but now that I've turned my volume down, I can kind of turn this up. And I did turn down this to like a 0.7. So I think this can actually be a little bit louder maybe a 0.7 as well. That sounds pretty good. You can just kind of listen to it and change it to your liking. I think I'll turn the volume of the breeze down to a 0.6 and then leave this at 0.7. And then also on this uh, right here, I'm going to click on the display waveforms just so that we can display those waveforms and kind of see how it's looking. So now if you look right here in the waveforms, you can kind of hear that it starts to get a bit louder kind of right here. You kind of hear that little crunching sound. It kind of sounds like it's like going over a rock or a stick or something. And so I want to make that happen right when he's going on the ground. So I'm going to play through this and he falls down right about here. So I'm going to press G to grab and just kind of move that sound effect over. And just play through that and make sure you get the timing right. All right, that's good. So I now want to fade it out so that you can't hear it until he actually hits the ground. So what I'm gonna do is move to about here, just kind of about there, and I'm gonna animate the volume. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over the volume and press I, that is going to insert a keyframe. And then I'm gonna move back till when he's kind of out here, kind of up on the ground, or he's still in the air. And then I'm gonna turn the volume to zero. So just click and drag until it's zero. And then I'm gonna hover my mouse over this value and press I, and that's gonna add another keyframe. And you can actually see that animated value right there. So as he hits the ground, it kind of gets louder. Play around with the timing until that sounds right. All right, and that is good. So we're now going to add in the next sound effect, uh, which is going to be his voice. So we're going to add in that ah sound effect. So let's add this in. 
this one right here. Now to make it sound kind of like a cute penguin, I'm gonna turn this pitch up. So I'm gonna turn the pitch all the way up to a value of two. And that way it's going to sound kind of like Chipmunky. So if I now play through this, you can kind of hear that. And that sounds much more cute because it's very high pitched. And then let's also turn on the display waveform so we can see that. Now, because we turned the pitch up, the waveform drawings aren't actually going to be correct because we turned the pitch up to two. And so now the sound effects is going to play at double the speed. So don't really use these as reference when you're cutting the strip because that's not an accurate representation of the placement of those sound effects because we have turned the pitch up to two. So you're just going to have to listen to it and then just cut it where you need to. So I'm going to play through this and just find the first one and then it kind of ends about here so I'm gonna click on this sound effect and press K to cut that we're gonna cut that sound effect and then let's play through this so there's the first one so I now want to play the timeline until he starts to open up his mouth right about there so I'm now gonna click on this and press G to grab and we're just gonna stick it right here and then let's also bring this over and we can just play through this and get the timing right and I do think I want to turn the volume down just to like a 0.9 so it's a little bit quieter and that sounds pretty good. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so the second one, let's play through that. Okay, and it stops about there, so I'll press K to cut that. So use the K to cut the strip, and then let's just get the timing right. It's already pretty close. And I need to actually click on the handle there and press G to grab and kind of bring the handle in a little bit. Let's play through that again. Okay, let's listen for the next one. I'm gonna press K to cut that. Let's bring this back here. So it kind of starts around here, so I'll press K to cut this. I can select this one, press X to delete it. Let's just bring this over here. Let's select this one and play it. I need to select the handle and just bring it out a little bit. All right, there we go. So I'm now just gonna find the spot where he opens up his mouth right about there. I'll press G to grab. Let's bring this in. And that sounds good, so I can now select the rest of those sound effects, the ah sound effects, and I can press X to delete that. Let's also save this file if you haven't saved it already, so you can just click on File, and then click on Save As. And I've already saved this, I'm just going to save it as video editing.blend, and then click on Save As, and then press Control S as you're working on this to save it. Alright, so we just have one sound effect left, and that is the uh, walking in snow. So I'm going to click and drag and just drop this into a blender, I'll press G to grab, bring it over, and then I can also turn on the waveforms to kind of see that. Now he is walking pretty fast, and so on the pitch here, I'm actually going to turn the pitch up to a 1.5. So that way when I play through this, the walking is a bit faster and a bit higher pitched. And then also I'm going to turn down the volume. Let's turn the volume down a bit so it's not quite as loud. Maybe to like a 0.5 or a 0.6. That sounds pretty good. So I now just need to cut these and just kind of cut up a bunch of them and then I can duplicate those around and we're actually going to need to place every one of those crunching sound effects right where his foot is walking. So I'm just going to play through this and I'm just going to cut some different parts where the foot is walking. So I'll press K to cut that, press the space bar to play. K to cut that, press the space bar to play. Okay. Maybe bring the handle down, bring this handle in. Let's play that. Bring this out a little bit. Let's play through this one. Okay, press K to cut that. Okay, press K again to cut that one. So we now have those ones already. We have all those. Let's keep going. Okay, we can cut those ones. Okay, I'm just going to do a few more. Okay, so that is good. So I'm just going to select the rest of them here and I'm going to press X to delete them. So I've just cut up each single step and now I'm just going to time those correctly to the penguin walking. So let's just play through this and then we can move these around. And what I'm going to do is overlap them. So I'm going to press G to grab and kind of overlap these because the penguin is walking pretty fast. So let's just play through that now. And I'm just going to guess when the penguin is walking up the hill because when he's walking up the hill, I can't actually see his feet. So I'm just going to kind of guess where that is. Oh, that's the wrong one. Control Z to undo that. Let's bring this over here. Play through that. So I can see he kind of steps right here. So I'll bring that over. Okay, just line up these last few ones here. Bring that last one forward a little bit. 
And then if you need to, if you don't have enough, you can just select some of them and press Shift D to duplicate. And it's okay if a few of them are the same exact sound effect. Um, as long as they're kind of placed differently, it's going to be hard to tell that it's the same exact sound effect. All right, so now we can just render this out to a final video. So I'm going to scroll right down here and I want to set an output. So I'm going to click on this file icon and I'm just going to locate to the folder where I've saved all my other files. And I'm just going to call this final animation. All right, final animation. I'll click on accept. And then let me just show you the settings that I like to use. So I like to use the FFmpeg video for the file format, and that is going to render it out to a video file. Let's open up the encoding. And I like to use the container of MPEG-4. And then right here on the video, I like to use a video codec of H.264. And then I just set this to medium quality and good. And then on the audio codec, I like to set this to AAC for the audio codec. So just press Control S again to save, and then you can press Control F12, and that is going to render out the final video. And that is it. So that is going to finish this up for this entire tutorial series. So if you made it through the entire tutorial series, then thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial series, and I hope you learned a lot from it as well. And if you'd like to share your result with me, you can definitely do that. So if you want to post your result somewhere online, or you could also post the animation on YouTube, and then you can send me a link, or you can just let me know where I can look it up and I'd love to see your guys's finished results. And as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I am trying to create Blender tutorials and Blender content for a living. So if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then some great places to do that are over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And I do really appreciate the support. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and I hope to see you in a future tutorial. Ooh. Ooh.